should be fun. Um, all right, everybody. Well, uh, my name is Greg Goodland. I am the public affairs officer for the Rio Grande National Forest. And on behalf of the Rio Grande and the San Juan Mountains Association, I'd like to association, I'd like to welcome you to our forest specialist series. Really excited about this uh, presentation that we're going to have tonight. Um, I'm going to just have, uh, again, this welcome. I'm going to introduce you to Kelly, our visitor information coordinator, who is with the San Juan Mountains Association and hosting the event tonight. And then we'll uh, have her introduce you to our guest speaker. First, Kelly's going to give us a little bit of information on how to run our screens in case we want to be interactive, which I highly recommend that we do because, man, we have a lot more fun and we get a lot more uh, information out that way. Answer those questions that you may have in the back of your mind. If you have it, somebody else probably does too. So, um, Without a delay, let's do it. Kelly, welcome. Kelly Defy is the, again, the visitor information coordinator for the San Juan Mountains Association. Thanks, Greg. We're just going to go through a couple of like housekeeping things. We welcome questions and comments. You can add those in the chat. Uh, that um, you'll find that writ on the bottom ribbon with like it's a speech bubble. Or you can raise your hand if you look in your reactions. There's a little place for you to raise your hand and we'll try and monitor that so that you guys get a chance to ask your questions. It's going to be like a 40 minute presentation, answer a question and answers afterwards. Um, we want you to stay on mute unless you need to ask a question because background noises can be very distracting. Uh, let's see what else is important that I need to get started. Oh, we have a door prize. So put your name in the meeting chat and um, you'll be eligible to get... Oh, I have two things here. Let me see if I can show you two little things. I've got a book about the Lake City geology. There's also a section in there about mining. And then we have a bachelor loop booklet. If you guys are familiar with the area, there's a loop of um, in near Creed. And it's kind of got a historical interpretive booklet that we're going to give to you guys so you can take it on the on the loop and and learn a little bit about the history of those mines up there in Creed. So that pretty much is it. I, Christoph is our guy. And let's see, you're working on the mine in Nelson Tunnel, right? That's it. Well, that, that is so yesterday. Right now, we just got back from Safira Benita Peak over in, in Silverton, and I, I am joined over here in the Silverton studio by, by my colleagues Aaron Johnson and Sam Ash, uh, who are running the drilling program uh, at Lake Emma, uh, where they've successfully drilled into the Sunnyside mine. So yeah, from one mine to the next, and but that's not the topic here for the day. The topic here today is the Nelson Tunnel, so I'm going to go ahead and fire, the, uh, fire this up, and we'll uh share the uh try a couple different screens make sure we share the we share the right one we'll see what pops up and this one's can now see your screen that's good and there we are okay so is everybody able to see the kind of main welcome screen right now i am seeing it awesome okay cool well there and there we are we're going to Scooch this irritating thing out of the way. There we go. Ugh. There we are. All righty. So here we are. Nelson Tunnel, past, present, and, and, and future. Oh, don't make me advance the slide with clicking. Hello. There we go. Okay. So... Uh, a lot of people, a lot of different groups involved here with this. This is a super fun site. So EPA is involved. We'll find out in a few slides why the U.S. Forest Service is involved here with this. The state's also involved here, both the CDPHE and uh, Division of Reclama Reclamation, Mining, and Safety. Uh, the engineering is being provided by Schnabel Engineering for the underground and HDR uh, for all the other works, including all the uh, environmental work. A quick agenda here for, for today. Just give you a quick overview of the whole site. Uh, talk about the rehabilitation that we've done over the past four years. Talk about the uh, conceptual design of this feasibility say that we did uh, for each work. Um, work that's going on right now will be happening this year. And then uh, open the questions and comments. So, where are that? Uh, that that being said, if somebody does want to speak up and ask a question, I mean it's a small group. I'm totally fine there with that. So, um, if you're cool with that, um, you can do it that way. So. Just as a quick note, this is a super fun, uh, fun site, and 
Uh, for those of you that do work in Superfund uh, quite a bit, you'll you'll see that we're uh, we're in characterization for the final one is uh, site-wide remedy, and we're currently in the interim remedy uh, for cleanup. And this will make more sense as we kind of go through here and let you know what work we're doing where. Now, uh, I know that a lot of the people here on the call are, you know, uh, right in, you, you know, uh, you know, right in, right in Crete, right in, you know, the Rio Grande National Forest, maybe San Juan Forest, maybe some of the other areas in here. Uh, but for those of you not from, uh, maybe call from another part of the state, uh, this is where we are. You can get my, my handy pointer over here. And we're going to handy pointer. There we go. All righty. So we find ourselves right here in Creed. So and that is at the kind of the southern edge of the Colorado Mineral Belt. And that kind of runs across the state like this. That's where you find our big mining districts. Uh, the tunnel itself is actually very conveniently located uh, just north of the town of Creed. And we'll zoom in a little bit here on this. And the extent of the actual Superfund site are this area right along the river and then uh, the, you know, the Nelson Tunnel inside the mountain. Here's just another view of this whole, uh, this whole thing. We've got Willow Creek that's, flow, you know, that's flowing down this way. Uh, the Commodore 5 level is shown here in red. And the Nelson Tunnel level is shown here in green. Now, you might say that these... Right about the same way. They look about the same. Are they at different levels? Well, barely. Uh, the Commodore 5 is about 50 feet higher than the Nelson Tunnel. Now, the reason here for the, this is there was a whole series of mines that ran across the top in here on the Amethyst Vein. And uh, what happens in uh, most mine sites is, you know, you start from the top, you start digging down and in and down and in. And after a while, you know, it gets kind of harder to haul all that ore up and it gets harder to pump out all that water, right? So uh, what happens is um, so many sites, they'll drive a tunnel underneath all the other workings, they'll mine up to the mine, and then that way all the water drains out of that tunnel and all the ore gets thrown down there and there you go. Uh, so these are just two different haulage levels, haulage and drainage levels uh, for all the mines that are here on this complex. All right, so what have we got going on here? Yep. Mentioned it drains amethyst vein. There are three collapses back in there uh, holding back about 22 million gallons of orange water. Stuff that we don't want to have going out into Rio Grande, right? Now, the only access into the Nelson Tunnel is from the Commodore 5 level. We'll see again how that works. Uh, and so right now, the our interim fix, so by that we really kind of mean, um, you know, what's like, the, like our triage, what we're trying to do. Uh, we want to make we want to mitigate this pool has. We want to make sure these pools are not going to blow out uh, into the river. And here's kind of a view here of the of the site. So again, we've got the Commodore here in red. There the Nelson Tunnel. Well, I would say that it'd be here in green, but actually it's kind of full of blue. And a reason for that is these are different mine pools. So what happens with all mines when uh, you know gravity being what it is? They tend to collapse, and that's happened in several spots in Nelson. The portal has collapsed, and it's formed a pool right here. There's another collapse in this area, and that now forms the lower mine pool. And there's another collapse in here that forms the upper mine pool. So this is looking down. There's like bird's eye view looking down. And this right here is the cross section here through all the, all the workings. Commodore 5 level is here, so that's kind of a cut through here. And then the uh, Nelson tunnel is right underneath it. And to connect at various points. All right, and here's kind of a close-up view uh, of the area. So for anybody driving the Bachelor the Loop, this is a cool view looking up on those different mine levels. And you come along this road right in here, and look at this area. The Commodore 5 is here, the Nelson Tunnel is here. All right, so I promised you that in a few slides, you'd get the, uh, uh, you know, you get the question answered of, okay, why is the Forest Service involved? Well, so this right here is a series of uh, mine claims. So these are, you know, various, you know, uh, patented mine claims owned by various private entities. Now, when a mine claim is not patented or does not exist in an area, the ownership reverts to, you know, kind of the default owner here for the area, which, congratulations, happens to be the U.S. Forest Service. So, yep, right in, uh, uh, right in here. All this is private property, but the Nelson Tunnel portal lies on top of the Forest Service property, and that's why, um, that's why you know, Kelly and, and Greg uh, get to kind of care about this, because unfortunately, eh, there you are. All right, so what's happened here at the, uh, at the Nelson Tunnel? 
just kind of a quick timeline. Um, they first started mining this area in the, eight, in the 1890s, drove the Nelson Tunnel in 1892. They extended it then further, um, right about the turn of the century. Uh, then after World War I, they explored lower levels uh, below the workings. Uh, they ended mining in 1976, did some exploratory work in the 80s, and then since then, uh, since 2000, been a lot of rehab work. Uh, the state was involved in the early 2000s, then EPA did additional work outside uh, early 2010s, and then uh, we've been involved more on the underground since then. And then uh, this right here, uh, I, I love old photographs, and this is a cool view here of this. You can still see, you know, you can still see when you drive the battery, you can see the ore house. You can see the Commodore 4 level, the Commodore 3 level. These old tram houses are gone. Um, and the Nelson Tunnel is kind of hidden in this corner here in this picture. All right. So uh, next thing here. Um, what I just want to hit this uh, here real quick is uh, a little bit about the mining terminology. Um, I'll be using kind of a lot of mining terms and just let everybody know what it is. The tunnel. Well, it's a horizontal thing that goes right through the mountain. And at it, it's horizontal. It goes partway through the mountain and then stops. All right. Uh, a shaft is a vertical or an inclined, uh, kind, of a, you know, kind of near vertical opening that goes underground. Uh, a cross cut goes across through the mine. Uh, this right here is the vein. This is stuff that you're trying to mine, mine out. And so when you're, when you're going across a vein, it's called a cross cut. When you're going along a vein, it's called a drift. You connect it up to other levels with a raise. When you're actually mining material out, that's called a stope. That material then falls and then falls down. And then when you're mining down between levels, it's called a winds. So there we are. Now, one confusing thing is, is that the Nelson Tunnel actually only has one exit, so technically it'd be an added. The uh, kind of colloquial terminology uh, is when like uh, something being driven for a purpose other than mining, they call it a tunnel because the tunnel was just it wasn't mining anything. They were just using it to haul material. So there we are. Now, this is probably one of the coolest maps that I've seen here of, of this. Uh, this right here is a hand-drawn stope map uh, late uh, 90s. The Commodore 5 level is here. The Nelson Tunnel is here. And there's about 1,200 feet of workings up above. Uh, and you can see um, all these places. This is where they've mined out all this stuff. Now. The way that I like to the, that I like to think of uh, of mining and see if this works here for you. So narrow vein mining, think of an Oreo cookie. So now this Oreo cookie, it could be flat, or in this case, your Oreo happens to be inclined here like this. Now, of course, nobody wants to eat you know the actual cookie part of it. Everybody just wants to eat the cream, right? So your cream is the vein that you're trying to get out. And so you can just, when I'm talking about mining through a vein, just think of an Oreo and you're kind of in there sort of picking at trying to get to the cream, right? All right. So moving on, let's see, let's see what this Oreo cookie looks like in real life. Here's a cool picture that you just see, you know, from, from the bachelor loop. And uh, let's see why we kind of went in here in the first place. So this is before any kind of rehab was done. Here you see kind of precariously perched rail. Leg breakers in here. There's some stuff coming down. Now this right here is a bachelor shaft with a very questionable wooden ladder. Here is a view from the bottom showing, yep, we did make it across. I was warned when going down this ladder, don't put both feet on the same step and don't step in the middle. Yeah. All right. This is what it looks like in reality. So this is another cross section in through here. So. I'm sure a lot of you have seen, you know, the uh, large kind of head frames. You know, like, of course, the Yankee Girls, a real famous one out here by Red Mountain. But you see, you know, the big wooden head frames up above there. Well, that's what this right here is. It's one of these wooden head frames. It just happens to be underground. Now, what's it doing here? Well, they did exploratory work down here at the bachelor shaft. Uh, went about, oh, about, about 120 feet down uh, from here. to do some exploration lower on this amethyst vein. Uh, and what they had, they had they had the hoist here, so you know the big drum, the big drum, the motor. They had a cable that ran up to here. There would have been a wheel down over in here, and then that dropped the cable down, and you could access the workings down below. Now it serves as a way for us to get down from the Commodore level over here to the Nelson Tunnel and to explore that. What does Nelson Tunnel look like? Oh, something like this. What happens when you go further downstream? Oh, something like this. 
All right, so let's go upstream a little ways instead. That got a little bit too deep. Okay, we go upstream a little ways, and gosh, this looks messy. Well, let's 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 stay for better or for worse. Let's stay with the, with Oreo cookie analogy, and let, let's say that the cream in the Oreo cookie, you left the Oreo cookie out in the sun. The cream got really sloppy, and it dropped out. So now all the Oreo cream has dropped into your, your your workings and is now piled up, piled up, water's piled up here behind it, now flows over the top. So this right here is like a spillway uh, underground. So this right here is what creates the lower mine pool. Okay, all right. So let, let's go back up the Commodore level because Nelson's done so too, too heavy, uh, is kind of too nasty. Let's take a look in down here. Okay, as we, this right here is a daylight winds. It connects the Commodore also to the Nelson tunnel. Walk by here, our kind guide said, oh, make sure to only step over on this side. I said, all right, well, what, what's, what's going on? He said, well, these boards are all rotten and you'll fall 40 feet into acid water. Okay, was it true? I looked down, yep. Yep, fall for you've done acid water and you'll hit a bunch of old stuff on the way too. So, okay, so fine, let's, let's move on. So now we're on the amethyst vein. And the amethyst vein is really, is really interesting. Uh, it was a former fault in this area and it got remineralized. And uh, so it actually looks almost like a conglomerate up in, up in here. And someplace it's clay. So this right here is the stuff that they wanted to mine out. And then this right here is kind of the host rock on both sides. Um, another term that you'll hear, from me, uh, would be this right here is the foot wall, this right here is the hanging wall. And that's because, you know, as you're walking along here, you're walking on the foot wall, and the hanging wall is here above, uh, uh, right above Jeff's head. Okay, now we're walking in through here. You can see we've got some mold and some questionable wood up above us. What's up above there? I have no idea. Oh, now this right here is a raise. Remember that kind of slope cross, cross section that went up like up to 1,200 feet? I mean, yeah, this could go up a ways. How far? I don't know. Light doesn't reach. My little laser didn't reach. It's probably a good ways. All right. Well, does anything come down those raises? Oh, yes. Yes, it does. So this raise has been spitting a bunch of water and rock and dirt and sand, and it, you know, pulled up a bunch of water in here. Now, when rocks go flying down 800 feet, those things get cooking. Uh, and that's, in fact, what happened here. And we wanted to, of course, now, well, we may be walking across here in this picture, but this is not something you want to do on a regular basis. All right, so what's behind that or that rubble? Oh, yeah, more backed up water. Okay. Some more questionable support up above here. Yeah. Uh, probably shouldn't talk about this picture here too much. We've got some questionable wood holding up less questionable rock, so let's just move right on to the next picture. Uh, here you can see that people have put a whole bunch of steel up into their back. And, you know, I like this picture because it's kind of a life lesson in, in, in some ways. You know, you want to move forward. You want to keep on going. You want to mine through here. Oh, you know, you put on more steel, more support, and it collapses. And at some point you just have to say, you know what? Okay, time out. That's, that's enough. Let's, let's just get around. Let's go around the problem for a while. And so that's what they did. They did a runabout or a bypass going into the football and getting around the collapse area. Here's what it looks like on the other side. Eh, timber's seen better days. All right. This right here is the no name or the YO2 winds. It also leads down to the Nelson Tunnel, um, also down to the, um, now to the kind of the tailwaters of the lower mine pool. There's another access point with... Another questionable ladder. Now, some of you may look at this and say, well, that's not safe. And I'd say, ah, ha, ha, hold on. Please take a look down here. See, it says danger, keep out. Problem is solved, right? So let's move on. Oh, this is another exciting thing. Look, we've got wood, we've got rail, we've got other steel, we've got all kinds of stuff piled in here. This looks like this wants to sort of collapse in on us here. Ugh, well, that's not good. Okay, well, let's move on and... Well, this is interesting. You know, we've got some orange discoloring here on the bottom. I wonder what that is. Okay, now we're just past this collapse. See a bit of an orange water ring in here. Well, what's going on? Where could this be coming from? You know, this, in fact, comes from uh, the Del Monte Rays, uh, which is our connection to the upper mine pool. Now, the portal mine pool, the lower mine pool, they stay at a constant elevation. The upper mine pool, 
changes elevation by up to about eight or 10, 10 feet, kind of depending on seasons, precipitation and so on. And what happens is when the water, when the upper mine pool gets high enough, it actually flows further along the Commodore, flows through that uh, in area with all the rail, and then falls back down into the Nelson Tunnel at the no-name. Okay, that's gonna, that's gonna be an important point later on. All right, moving further in. Oh, yep, yep, the water's getting deeper. Big, big orange bathtub ring. And further in the mine, uh, yeah, let's just walk past that point. That looks like a whole lot of clay and a bunch of more rotten wood. Um, these right here, these are really, really cool. These are just some older uh, kind of ore passes uh, to different levels. Uh, this right here is ore chute, so they uh, you know drive the muck train underneath here and load all the material from this. And when you went, went up to another level, you climb this ladder right here, and then you pull your tools up uh, through a toolbox over here in this. And also, um, for anybody that's in, uh, in, in, in the San Juans, uh, the, both the Creed and the, and the Silver Domini Museums are both really terrific and worth visiting. And they really kind of show what these uh, workers here look like. Okay, well, now we're coming here to this next part. Now, uh, looks like we've got some old timbers in here. We've got some plastic and some like one by fours here. Um, okay, well, we should be all right, right? We, oh, that's right. This is that same picture, just a little bit later. The plastic was there, but it didn't, it wasn't able to stop the, oh, I don't know, maybe 40 cubic yards of material that kind of came shooting down that raise. Okay, so um, yeah, let's keep on mo moving. Uh, now we go into some of the real old, cool old historical workings. Um, this corner is what, as we were designing our fixes, we call the hot steaming mess, um, simply because this right here has got a whole lot of stuff going on. So um, this is the area where they were stoping up here mining. So again, think if you're Oreo and you've picked away about half of all the, the creamy goodness here in the middle, at the same time, you've come in here from this side. So now you've also drilled a hole for your Oreo cookie and you're going through the other side and there's another random hole over here over here so yeah there's there's a lot going on there's a whole lot of wood stacked in there uh moving on here's another cool ore shoot and this now lead uh, now lead now leads us okay see okay by the way okay cool um and this now leads us over here to the berkshire shaft here's a classic there's another inclined shaft that uh, goes down and what does it go down into hmm a little bit like Star Wars, right? I wouldn't go in. That, uh, yeah, lots of floaties. Okay, so that was the condition that we found things in, in in 2016. And this is what I think that most of them would probably call like a bit of a fixer-upper. So next slides on here are going to be, well, how do we fix this up? So let's move right, right on. Okay, the rail looks a whole lot better here now. That's cool. All right, we're putting some rock bolts in this area and hold it in place. Uh, remember that scary ladder that I was told, yeah, keep me real careful stepping down? Well, guess what? We have a new solid ladder. This is, I can climb this up and uh, climb this all day long. It's safe, it's good, it's secure, and I just feel good about that. All right, the same place where I was, uh, was warned, hey, don't step on this or you'll fall 40 feet into acid. Well, now we can drive a locomotive across this. No problem. Good access back here, Nelson. And here's just a look down. No longer as scary. Again, you can climb this ladder all day and all good. And here you can also see where we're measuring uh, the water level down in the Nelson Tunnel. All right. Here we are in those places where we had a bunch of rotten wood up above there. We put in what, uh, what we call uh, steel sets. This part right in here. And then finger shield lagging, which runs in between here. And what's the finger shield lagging for? Oh, it keeps when rocks fall out, they keep from hitting you but you're still able to see what's up above you. So that's really important. It's so we know the mystery that we had here earlier. Okay, cool. So what else we have here? Okay, in some places we put in some mesh, we put in some rock bolts. It's actually just kind of big nails that go into the ground. All right, next one here is, remember those, uh, those raises, those will go up 200, 300, 500, 800 feet? Well, we know that material comes down. When it comes down, it is smoking. So we put in heavy steel, we put in all these steel bars and across, and then we put 10 feet of mine foam in there. That's material, it's like, your, it's like a running shoe kind of material. 10 feet of that, same material that comes down, hits it, boom, bounces, spreads the load over the steel, over the sets, 
they're good to go. Of course, we have drains there, make sure that water doesn't back up. So there we are, got this secured. Okay, that's nice. Okay, here's the very sketchy rock. This has got some real heavy steel sets underneath it, and we also fill this area up with foam. Again, I'm comfortable walking through this all day long. It's more creative steel work. So more creative steel work to keep us a safe, essentially kind of a safe tunnel going through uh, the collapsed wood. Again, more of these, more of these steel sets and boards. This is the not as scary no name winds. Here is a much nicer ladder to get and go up and down. No longer sketchy. And here's some pictures of what happened, you know, the area where you had all that stuff piled up on the side and want to make sure all this stuff didn't come in. So uh, Katra and, and ended up uh, remining through this uh, through this area, and see a little bit of the workings in here. Kind of lacing steel, digging it forward a bit, shoving bars ahead, you know, to keep the amount uh, from falling in, uh, from you know, being kind of being too much. And here we are. We've got these steel sets. We've got um, we said you had this clay zone that went here like this across the tunnel. So we found the good hard rock on this side. Set the steel there. Set the uh, steel across here. And we pump foam into the into the back, into this uh, void in behind here. So now this thing is fully secure. And there we go. And here's also a less sketchy uh, platform to be able to measure levels um, in the Del Monte. Now, I'd also like to I'd like to point point this out. So um, I'm a mining engineer, and I'm comfortable with steel sets, you know, rock bolts and rocks and support and all that. And, uh, you know, we just need a platform and it needed to be like three feet high. I'm like, well, that's easy to design. Here's a platform. Like, okay, this is great. That's going to build it. They're like, well, how are you supposed to get up there? They're like, well, we have a couple pieces of scrap. Here, we'll build you sort of a steppy, stooly thing. <sighs> Keep that in mind. It's going to look better later, later on. Okay, what else have we got? Yeah, more construction. You just see more construction photos as we're building these steel sets. Around the old ore chute, cut some parts off, more steel around. Does look as pretty, but it's nice and secure. Here's that area that I collapsed on us, and here we are. Dug it all out. New uh, new steel sets and all kinds of mine foam up there. All good to go. All safe and sound. I like that. All right, this is the hot steaming mess, and we have a whole lot of steel now in here to support all this. Then we have all this mine foam up above us. Again, keep us secure. Here's the area underneath all these ore chutes, and uh, essentially we just built steel all the way underneath this thing, fill it up with foam, and again, we're called, we now have easy a and safe access to the Berkshire. All right, remember the crappy steps I ended up with? All right, this is when a real structural engineer actually designs a platform, and he remembers things like, oh, you know, steps and <laughs> handrails and, you know, like things that are up to code, right? So now here's our, uh, and even the safety ring. So here we are, we're now above the Brookshire with a nice platform, and uh, um, you know, and here we are. Here's a platform, there's an upper platform, a lower platform. So this this does connect to the upper mine pool, which does go up and down, so the while mine pool is low, you can work for the lower platform, and when it's high, you work for the upper one. I really like this photo, uh, just because, you know, it shows the cool old workings right in here, the old, uh, uh, you know, cage that took people down to levels, and then our brand new ladders. Heading down this way. All right. So now that we have all this in place, well, this is great. Yeah, you fix up stuff. What you got to do? Well, now we're able to start dealing with the, uh, the long-term solution here at, at Nelson of characterizing uh, this, essentially seeing where does the water come from? What can we do to fix this? And so this map just kind of shows different areas. We're taking water samples, and we'll be doing pump tests to try and figure out where does water come from? What can we do to fix it? But the point is, we can now safely get from the portal all the way to the Del Monte Rays, oh, even further, all the way to the Brookshire Shaft. We can now safely access all this. This is all getting in place, so now we can actually get to work. And here's and here's picture and here's pictures of uh, both state EPA folks as they're doing sampling in here. They now cleaned out Brookshire. On the platform, another area where they're doing some sampling. And then this right here is a picture uh, inside the Nelson Tunnel uh, at the bottom of the no name, uh, where they've, they're again putting up various pieces of equipment you know, to do continuous sampling uh, of the water. Do some other testing in that. So that's the status on here. So 
that's part of the so that was rehab work that we did which was part of the interim remedy and now we're able to just safely do uh, the characterization for the site so the next thing I'd like to talk about is this focus feasibility study that uh, we did so HDR and uh, Schnabel uh, it, that I did a few years ago and uh, it's essentially you had to figure out, okay, what are what do we want to do long term here with this project? And so here were the alternatives we looked at. No further action. Well, that's easy and kind of estimated costs back from like 2017. Uh, so we looked at uh, yeah, if 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 people could just put on, on mute, please, just so we get, we get a little bit of feedback. If you could go on mute, that'd be great. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, so. Uh, the various people that we looked at was to ignore it and hope that it goes away, hope it doesn't bother anyone. You know, that's always a popular one. Uh, just rehabbing the Commodore 5 level, monitoring. Well, that kind of needs to be done anyway. Okay. Um, and then we'll take a closer look here at, uh, uh, at kind of a, the three other options we considered. Uh, essentially mining back through the Nelson Tunnel and installing a bulkhead, going past Nelson, or in fact, dewatering the whole mine. So let's just take a look at these, quick look at these alternatives and then go to what we had. So alternative number three is, okay, we want to put a bulkhead in, in the Nelson, so the Nelson exists. Well, let's open it up and just mine through, right? Okay, I mean, that should be fine. I mean, what does Nelson look like? It's nice. Look, it's a double tracker. It's nice. I mean, you, you've got all kinds of, of well-dressed folks uh, in here. Um, I'm thinking management and not management, probably right here. So um, we should be good to enter that, right? Well, that photo turns out to have been a little bit dated. This is, in fact, what it looks like now. Uh, you can tell what the Nelson Tunnel is by the fact that there's water flowing out. And here's a few timbers that might have been part of the portal structure at some point in their life. Okay, well, okay, maybe we can open that up. I mean, what's behind there? Oh. You know, stuff like this, like thick feet of orange sludge that would need to be disposed of, you know, in you know some controlled way. Ugh, that's not good. And so, and so, alternative three would be it would have been digging, you know, a thousand feet of that. Alternative five would have been digging five thousand feet of that kind of stuff. So both of these, eh, not a real good idea. So the option that we selected, alternative four, was to drive a bypass tunnel. Parallel to the Nelson, come into the Nelson back where we know that we have good rock, install a flow-through bulkhead in, in here that will be able to control you know, any kind of surges in the, in the mine, and then let the water run out uh, through here and into the stream, and just like it's doing right now, but be able to have a safe access to get in there. Alrighty, so where's this location in reality? It's right over in here. It's a good spot because somebody has started digging here. Yeah. That was a that was a you know that was a, uh, a bit of a some storage you know some uh, turn of the century type stuff. So okay, so we're going to come in right in here. All right. Well, so initially we looked at seeing seeing if we could get you know like some uh, some sort of floating equipment or something, some drill rigs. Well, helicopters are real expensive, so said so okay, you know what? We better build ourselves you know an access road. So access road to go down in here, and we're going to build ourselves a nice culvert. Going in through here, let it water through, and then we'll have a nice platform uh, to drill. And why do we want to? Why do we want to want to drill? Well, we want to find out. You know, before you drive a tunnel, you want to know what's ahead of you, right? So, the first step is that you're going to do a geotechnical site invest investigation. So you're going to see, you know, how feasible is it, and you're going to see how broken up is the rock. You know, how strong is the rock? And uh, so here's some pictures of, of you know. That work here drilling, and uh, uh, and and uh, a colleague Erin here next to me was on all these projects, so she's been all, all through this kind of, kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, so you know what's so what's done here here with this? Well, you core, uh, you core along this uh, this alignment, and you log. Then you know what kind of rock is it? How many fractures are there? Are they really broken up fractures? Is there clay? Is there water? Are you going through some areas that are just like sand or mud? You know, and you document all that. You collect all these cores, and then you do, and then you do some lab testing on, on, on those to see how strong the rock is, you know, how brittle it is, and so on. All right. And now, uh, can you do this horizontally? Yeah, you bet. Here you go. And again, another one of Aaron, Aaron's projects. And here we are, drilling horizontally. And you might say, if you weren't muted, 
gosh, what happens if you hit water? Won't all the water blow out and make a big mess? And I would say, if you weren't muted, that's a great point. So what we do is we drill through a blow-up preventer. And uh, essentially what you, what you do, you come in, you, uh, you drill the short ways, you put in a, you, you ground in a piece of pipe that's bigger than what you're gonna be drilling. And you put a valve on here that'll stop any flows. And then you drill through this, uh, this device, a blow-up preventer. And what happens if you hit water and a bunch of water comes out, but you, this will close around the drill string. Water doesn't come out. You're able to pull the drill out. You close the valve. You don't have a mess. And then you're able to do, you know, some other work. So let's make sure we don't blow any water, you know, into the creek. What does this hole look like on the inside? Something like this. Kind of cool. And yes, it took me a whole lot of tries to try and get this photo in, the, in here. <laughs> so that's what the hole looks like on the, on the inside. Here are some pictures of what the core looks like uh, that, you, uh, that you get out. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we've got a, we had a raised hand here. Uh, Greg, what's your, what's your question? I couldn't find my mute button. No, that was just a clapping hand. That was oh, clapping hand. Thank you. Good job. Um, yay! <laughs> right on. Well, thank you, clapping hand. Thank you, Greg. So here's here's a picture of some really nice core. And you know what? And so what does this mean? So if you drill and you pull out solid rock, you can say, okay, I've cored out solid rock. I'm going to be mining or tunneling through solid rock. Okay, right on. That should work out pretty well, right? Okay. So here's an here's another picture of some just, you know, kind of cool pyrite and, uh, and stuff and cool crystals inside the rock. Cool photo. Here's rock that's broken up a bit more. And now that's, an, and that's important to know uh, because, you know, if, you know, the rock looks kind of solid, but when it's broken up a lot like this, it means when you're, when you're mining forward, the rock is going to be broken around you. It means that you're going to have to put in a lot more rock support, you know, to keep the tunnel safe and put that up in there. And sometimes if your core looks like this, as it's completely broken up, and actually looks kind of like road base, then, you know, it's going to be problematic. Now, can you still mine through this? Of course you can. It's simply going to cost more. The important thing is, is that, you know, if ahead of time, you know, we, we core through the tunnel alignment, we're able to say, okay, um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, out of our, out of a thousand feet, we've got, you know, 200 feet of really bad ground and 200 feet of medium ground uh, and 600 feet of really good ground. Great. We designed different support for those three things. Contractor is able to bid that. And then you go to work and you know what it's going to cost. What's bad is if you think, we have a thousand feet of great ground and then you hit 200 feet of really not great ground. Well, then it becomes a problem during construction. This way you get, we get ahead. So what's the, so you're pulling out this core, and so what's the next? You and here we have Erin again, actually, and she's logging the core, documenting exactly what's in there, so we're able to use that uh, here for the design. What's a lot of the stuff that's be, being logged? A big thing is kind of the rock quality designation, where you just measure the the length of the good rock compared to however much you drilled out. All right, so. Once we've done the, the geotech investigation, we've done the design, it's time to get going and it's time to drive this bypass at it. So you come in and you start building a portal. It's probably gonna look something like the Commodore 5. Then you go inside and you start drilling and blasting. Zip, you drill holes. Maybe use a bigger drill to drill the holes. You load the holes with explosives and you blast. And that is a lot of fun. Then you put in your ground support, and here we've got some rock bolts and some mesh. Uh, if the ground is really bad, you might need to use some shotcrete, some sprayed concrete, putting that on there. And then here's another real important thing. You're trying to get somewhere, right? You're trying to get to a very specific spot, which happens to be the rest of the Nelson Tunnel. So you got to have your surveyors with you that are going to measure to see, okay, where are we going, where are we at, and how do we get there? Yay. So here... Servers are doing the work, making sure that we get to the right spot. And then you break through the other side and ta-da, you're now in the tunnel on the other side. This is great. I mean, it's nice, you know, it, good ways, you know, it's a little bit of broken rock, but overall it looks, uh, it looks nice. Here's another view. You know, this is what you have. And uh, oh, wait, <sighs> that actually wasn't the Nelson Tunnel. That was a standard mine. The Nelson Tunnel actually looks like this at the point that we're trying to get to. So, you know, a little bit of a problem, but now, now you might say, you say, you know, this photo looks a little bit dated. Maybe the water was just really high on that particular day. 
it's still a problem now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's still a problem now. Now does it get deep? Yeah, yeah, it 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 gets deep. But they're able to get a scanner in place. They're able to get survey points in, and now we're able to see exactly where we need to get to. What does the area look like that we're trying to hit? It looks like this. Now, the good thing is the ground here looks terrific. This is going to be a great spot to go into the tunnel. We are just at, and we know where the water is, which we get, you know, ahead of time, no problem. So what are we going to do here to deal with this, the, this water? Well, here's kind of the overall kind of cartoon plan. The idea is that, you know, right now, the, uh, right now, the, uh, the, the water flows through the lower mine blockage. Uh, it flows through the Nelson Tunnel, uh, through the, the collapsed portal and into the river. Uh, now, what would happen is, as we're, as we're getting ready to mine into here, we'd block off the water in the Nelson, pump it out through the Commodore, or some other options that we may, may look at, treat the water, put that into the river, and then we'd be able to then mine a bypass added into here, and then let the water just run through the bypass uh, while we build our bulkhead. And now, again, if you are muted, you might be asking, what's the mine bulkhead? Conveniently, the next slide has got right that here for you. And I'd like to tell you that this is some super complex, wild, crazy thing. It's actually a lump of concrete inside the mine. That's about all it is. It, you know, it looks like a cork, more even like a no block. Now, the thing is, it is an engineered. It is an engineered design. Let's 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 give it some credit. It's an actual engineered, you know, concrete design designed to hold back, you know, uh, you know, the pressure of all the water here behind it. It's common in mines, the hydroelectric tunnels and stuff. They're just, you know, plugs keep the water from uh, from flowing out. We don't want it. Okay. What does it look like? More detail of you? Well, you know, it, there's more detail. You have a pipe that goes through it. Um, you actually end up grouting, you know, the ground around it. You know, so th there's real design here involved. Then how do you build it? Well, you know, first you clean off all the rock in the area. You put in rock bolts. Then you grout, you, you know, you put in this, this grout curtain all around, all around you, make the uh, rock less permeable. You put in an intake structure. Build your forms. You put in all of your rebar, just so that concrete work. Another view, here's your form work, all the pipe penetrations through the bulkhead. And then you start pumping your concrete into the forms. And ta-da, you are left with a lovely bulkhead. Here's another example of, of one. Got a nice valve, sampling port, bulkhead in place. Uh, now this is what it looks like when things are dry. And then after the bulkhead's been in place for a while, it looks a little bit wetter, a little bit gushier, but uh, you know, it's doing its job. It's holding back most of the water. Now, now that so that would solve the issue in the in the Nelson Tunnel. And just to make a, a point clear, so uh, a couple of these examples, these bulkheads are kind of ceiling bulkheads. Our design would be for a flow through because for right now, for better or for worse, we'd allow the same amount of water to flow out as does right as happening right now. Uh, and so the pipe would be designed to let the water through. But if the, in the event of a surge, like say if either any of those mine pools kind of let loose, that we'd be able to uh, control the flow out there to whatever you know the river is able to, to handle. Now, uh, last kind of point I'd like to make here, and we're almost done here with the presentation, is uh, you know the Commodore Five level is just 50 feet above the Nelson. So what happens? You got a bulkhead in, in place there. You got a big surge of 22 million gallons of water. It hits that, and it's going to back up real quick, isn't it? So what we're going to do in the Commodore 5 level is put a little bit of is put in a flow control structure. Uh, it's then just a very thick kind of steel door that you can you can close. And then um, if water were to back up, this would stop the water. You know, keep the water from falling out of the Commodore uh, until you're able to treat it. And while it's allowing access into the rest of the mine. And with that, all right, a 40 minutes and 39 seconds, and we are done and ready for questions. So uh, with that, open up the floor. This is where you have the awkward pause where nobody wants to ask any questions. That's all right. We'll, we'll kind of sit through the awkward pause. I just want to say, Christoph, great presentation and really enjoyed it. Pat, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks. It's a yeah. No, that's a nice. Glad glad to have you join. Really appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, I have a question. All righty. Um, this is Wyatt who. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Wyatt. Hit, hit, hit uh, me up. 
Um, so this seems like a dumb question, but currently there could theoretically be some sort of um, catastrophic event where all this water gets dumped out of the tunnel and into uh, the creek going through Creed at some point. Is that, I mean, does that theoretically happen if we do nothing to it? So That is a possibility, exactly. So what we know right now is that we have about 22 million gallons of water that are being held back by some kind of a collapse. How long is the collapse? I have no idea. How watertight is the collapse? I have no idea. Is it designed for 40 feet ahead? It hasn't failed yet. Is it going to? I don't know. I mean, that's that's where the question re really really is. We we don't know the answer. Uh, you, you know how how long this is or how long it might last. What happens if the thing plugs uh, plugs up? Water le level increases and flows past. Yeah, you know, we we just don't know. Uh, and so that's why the idea is, you know, to come in and design something where we can control uh, whatever surges might come out. That's that's a great question. That's not a dumb question at all. That's a great question. Why? Right, thank you so much for asking that. <laughs> hey, Christoph, uh, I have a question. You know, it, it, it kind of ties on this uh, the Wyatt's one as well, and and it's I, I was curious at the thickness of that uh, bulkhead that you guys installed. Um, you know, is that a couple of feet is it 10 feet of concrete like closure and you know the the reason being is if you have that perhaps one of your current um plugs of natural debris breaks and decides to come down with it i don't know if it would flow that fast would it could it you know smash the plug and break through it you know, that's a, and that's another great question. And yes, that's definitely one of the design uh, concerns, you know, having a giant wall of water and debris coming zipping at here at a high speed. And, and so this thing is designed solid. This is, you know, they're, we designed the plug for, for a certain pressure of the, you know, both the dynamic load of something hard hitting it, as well as the highest water pressure that, that you might eventually get. So uh, in this case, we'd probably be looking at like, say, a, a 20 foot plug, something like that. Might be 15, might be 25, but some, something in that range. That's a lot well, that, of concrete. <laughs> well, you know, it's not that much, actually. I mean, the so uh, the Nelson Tunnel in this area is about eight foot, uh, about eight foot tall by 10 foot wide. So it um, it's not a huge amount. I mean, when you I mean, you know compare it to like other road work or bridges or or that, it's. It's definitely a doable thing. Nice, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, Christoph? Yes, Ray, what you got? Um, is there any current treatment going on of the discharge water now? No. Okay, thank you. There's not, and that's and that that's why you know right right now the only design that's that's happening here right now is uh, is to mitigate any kind of kind of massive surges and not just the current flows go, going in here. Right. We're, we're just we're just trying to deal kind of a triage. We're just trying to deal with the uh, biggest issue in that you know right now the uh, Nelson is putting out you know 300 ish gallons per minute you know of my water and. I mean, it's, I mean, people are sort of able to live with that in here right now. If you suddenly put, you know, in a matter of a few hours, between 22 million gallons into the river, that would probably not be okay, right? Correct. And did I miss it earlier? How long were the tunnels? Oh, so, so the bypass were the, that we're suggesting uh, is going to be about 1,300 feet, 1,200, 1,300 feet long or so. Uh, the actual mine workings, gosh, there's miles of them. Uh, the whole section going uh, on the Commodore and going in is uh, something like two, uh, two to three miles in. Wow. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That's just, it, it's, a, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, you, you get your steps and when you go all the way, that's uh, <laughs> that's the definite thing. Yeah, those are, yeah, great questions. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hi, can you maybe uh, stop your presentation so we can see you better oh, for the question? Sure. Here? Yeah, you bet. Hey, All righty. There, there you go. I mean, we saw hey, this hey. little square of you before. Now, now we get to see <laughs> you. <laughs> well, right on. Yep. So you know, my my mind goes in in a million different directions uh, with with 
uh, all these questions for some folks. Uh, I was in the mine with Christoph just uh, in the tunnel. I shouldn't say the mine, uh, but uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, truly amazing work that I, I saw, um, having been underground a couple of times before. So, um, man, here's your chance. Ask him questions. Dave, you're up, and it's good to see you on. Thanks, Greg. Uh, I was just wondering, can you can you uh, specify uh, where are you on the project exactly now, and what's the pace? How long how long do you project it would take to finish uh, the current plan? Oh, that is another great question. So, right now, it, it, we, so we just finished the survey on uh, on Monday uh, on Monday afternoon, uh, and currently the uh, contractor Aptim is, is mobilizing on on site uh, to start building that that culvert, that drill pad, and then uh, this fall, are we looking at November? Is that right? Mid. Thank you. Mid to late October. Uh, is I'm planning to have the drillers come out and probably kind of the probably till about Christmas or or, or so to uh, do their horizontal drilling. Uh, we'll then we'll kind of work on the design in uh, 2024. And uh, once the design is is done, um, it's probably it, it's at that point it's going to be a matter of whenever the funding is available uh, to then actually drive the the bypass and build the bulkhead. Um, that's when that'll happen. And I mean. Anybody's guess, I guess, on that, uh, when that, that might be. Ho hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I mean, I, in, in my ideal world, summer 2025, we're going to work on this. We're going to town. So we'll see. Uh, I've got a question for you, Christoph. Um, I don't, maybe you mentioned in the beginning what, uh, it sounds like this has obviously been putting out water for some time. What kind of prompted the like, hey, we got to do something about this um, Nelson Tunnel? Gold King. Okay. That's, I was wondering about that too. Enough said. <laughs> I, was, I was camping along the Animus when that one broke actually, which was in crazy. So. Makes yes. Sense. And, and so let's put this in, in perspective. You know, when I talk about 22 million gallons, the um, Gold King was 3 million gallons, so this would be about 7 Gold Kings going wow. directly into the Rio Grande. Yeah. It would cause a problem. Yes, that's, yeah. I, I, I agree with the emoji. Yes, that, that, yes, we, none of us want to be there. None of us want to be there on that, and so that's why, that's why we want to prevent, you know, this, this, this from happening, this big blowout coming there. Um, but just here as a, as a note, um, kind of here on the flows, I know some of the questions have been on here, it's like, okay, well, flows are coming out. Is that bad or good? How long has that been happening? So there's, a, there's an interesting story here about this because that's not the cool thing about all these old mines, cool old stories, right? So when they were driving the Nelson Tunnel, as they're getting uh, close to the, to the Berkshire shaft there, you know, where you know, we saw the old and the new workings in place there, as they got closer to that, they had something like 6,000 GPM of water. And they had to exit the tunnel. Um, Stop production for a, for a long time. Now, how much flow is that? It was enough flow that some farmers in Monta Vista said, "There's extra water. We're following water rights on this thing," and uh, and and then uh, some of those water rights that eventually even got uh, got were bought by the uh, you know you know by Creed, and so they're part of the uh, you know part of the water portfolio for for Creed. So some some water has to keep coming out there, right? Um, so, yeah, just that's speaking a big about, there. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, on the Gold King note, like how many other sites are there like this around the state that are potentially problematic that are getting plans made on them? That was my question, Ariel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, and that's a great question. I mean, I mean, you know, we're involved on on, on some on some of them. Some of them, you know, have been partially partially not. Um, That's, you know, some are in different stages of kind of rehab and that work. Uh, that's a long way of saying, I don't really know. But there's probably quite a few. There's some that are known about. There's some that are unknown. Um, some are in stages of exploration and rehabilitation. Some are not. Uh, some are on private land. Some belong to private companies that are being dealt with. Some of these, you know, are on, on public lands. And, you know, that, uh, and, you know, EPA, Forest Service, BLM, stuff that are get, get to deal with. So... Uh, yeah, it's 
it's not un un common. This right here, what what makes Nelson Tunnel stand out is the fact that there's just this much water. You know, there's lots of other little mines of water in behind them. I mean, if you blow, you know, 10,000 gallons into a creek, that's not great. It's probably also not going to make national news. So to this extent, oh, you better well, right? I think just thinking of that possibility for me just makes me cringe. I don't know if everybody else on is feeling that too. I'm just like, oh man, let's not have that happen. So personally, I'm glad you guys up there. I wish you hadn't done the survey and put the Forest Service into that, but you know, you had to well, do uh, to do. <laughs> what uh, in our defense, it wasn't us doing that survey. I think that was, that was done by others. I, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think that the, uh, uh, well, again, I don't, I don't know the whole story by it, but I believe that the that the owner that the owner said, "Well, wait a minute, we don't think this is ours." Oh, look, it isn't. Um, so I think that was uh, part of that story. But I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for for sort of for the you know for EPA for sort of being involved because there is you know, you know funding available to fix this and do that. If this belonged to you know um, you know a bankrupt mining company or some dude that inherited this from their great grandfather, they made it, they wouldn't have the money to fix this, you know, and so it'd be a known problem, no way to fix it, and gosh, you know, that that's not good. Um, but there really is a more of a focus now. Now I don't know the answer of how many drain mines there are. You know, the uh, you know the state of Colorado uh, and and both EPA they're more involved with finding more more of these and you know categories and some, some of them so uh, more focus being put on here because gosh we all know about you know the need for water in the west right you know things you know things getting drier everyone more people there people need more water let's not contaminate the water we have right on on your note uh on your comment greg this is scott johnson everybody <laughs> uh, again thank you christoph for a, a, a great uh display here tonight uh, Greg, with your comment, I want to back it up as well because I work in Creed. <laughs> so if something were to come down out of uh, the Commodore or the Nelson, uh, my uh, my office is one of the first buildings that's going to reciprocate uh, any negative effects from that. So uh, I'm glad to see this is uh, pro uh, moving forward. Uh, the Creed itself, everybody is ecstatic about it, and you know we're uh, we're all looking to see and, um, you know, glad that it's moving forward. Uh, as part of that too, uh, you'd mentioned Christoph about them starting to do the culvert installation. Uh, I was actually in conversation today with a contractor. Um, they called in the locate requests. So, um, you know, it's, it's looking at as far as uh, next week, they could probably be starting to put that in. So. Uh, just to let you know, they are they are moving forward with that. Uh, just the general question that I have, and again, I don't know if you would know this or not. I know the question was raised about how many of these situations happen throughout the state. And I know we don't know that for sure exactly, but could you give like a ratio potentially of of that number? How many um private mines or mining companies i should say how many mining companies are stepping up to the plate and you know paying for remediation and the corrections you know the you know several 50 to 100 years afterwards uh, i'm curious to see i know like you said the epa and cdphe and us forest service you know is has there been any help um, from the state or federal or or some of these mines stepping up to the plate and you know paying for some of the remediation? Sure, and that's another a great question. And so, in, in it's a mixed bag. There are you know mining companies that are active. There are a lot of com uh, companies you know like uh, you know Hecla comes it comes to mind. You know they do a lot of uh, closures. So you know companies that are still in business, they absolutely do deal with these abandoned properties and stuff. And they've got you know, uh, you know they they work on fixing these things up. The problem that we run into with a lot of these abandoned mines is that 
the mining company that ran those went bankrupt 50, 100, 150 years ago. So there just may not be a, a, a lot of times, uh, even, even if they can find a responsible party for, for this, they may just simply be in, 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 unable to pay uh, for that. There's just, I mean, if I owned a mine, on one hand, that'd be kind of cool, you know, but on the other hand, if I suddenly have this giant liability, I couldn't come up with one, two, three, five, 20 million, whatever dollars to fix it. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. Thank you. I really appreciate everybody's uh, questions. I know it's always something here, you know, with doing kind of like Zoom webinars and things, you know, can't really see the audience. Like, okay, everybody paying attention? Like, is it cool? Like, are we are we not cool? You know, and so thank you so much for asking the questions, bringing those things up. Uh, was, I really appreciate that. Um, I guess anybody else? We're here at six. We are, and it looks like Greg got kicked off somehow. So I'll oh, take over, like a nice guy. Yeah, right? I don't know why they'd kick him off. <laughs> um, Chris, Tom, that was so, uh, thank you so much for that. Almost makes me want to be, have gone to be an engineer or a mining engineer. There you Almost. go. Or, or just come along with Greg the next uh, the next time and you know, we'll check out the to. Commodore. I hope they'll let me next time. Um, I, so anyway, thank you again so much for that. Um, awesome. So just to wrap up the meeting, we got... Next month, we'll be back here on Wednesday, September 27th. We're going to be talking about uh, the Bunker Archaeological Site test results with Price Heiner. And um, finally, our door prize, prize winner is Sam Ash. So, if right Sam on. Yeah. Dude, Sam, right here. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get that to Sam um, as soon as we can. So, again, thank you, everyone. For joining us. This was really awesome. Christoph, thank you so much. Um, if you want to stay on for a minute, I don't know if I don't know if Greg is gonna keep trying, but we to get back on, but we'll let everybody go and and hope to see you next month. Oh well thanks everybody. Appreciate the invitation okay, again and thanks everybody for attending and for your questions. Appreciate it.